previous video we did the HTML and today we're going to do the styling, the CSS. We have VS Code on the right and we have the live version running in the browser on the left. We also have Figma as well. I've hidden the UI so it's a lot cleaner. The way I've been teaching CSS is by using the Tailwind CSS utility classes and there's many different ways of styling the page such as BEM which is block element modifier. We're going to mix it up a bit, we're going to keep it simple and we're going to use a bit of utility classes. So we're going to create a new page in the CSS folder called page.css. We go back to case study and I'm just going to hit command B to hide that sidebar so you've got more space. Hit enter after style.css and type in link. Oop, done that too quick. So link, wait for it to come up and then hit enter. CSS page.css. What we need to grab from index is we need to grab the font styles, which is Google Fonts. Copy that over to case study page and paste. And if we go back to the live version, you can see we have the new inter font. So what we have to do as well, we have to give a maxed width on the containers. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to do that on the divs here. So you can see each one has a div. And I'm just collapsing these to show you. And this is where it's going to have a max width of 1024. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to target the header and the div, the section and the div. So if we go to style, Oh, sorry, if we go to page.css, the way we're going to do it is we're going to say the header, the very first div, we're using the arrow and then the div because we don't want to target the other divs in there. We want to say max width 10, 24 pixels. Save that. If I go back to Brave and let's see if that worked. Yeah. So you can see there, it's got a max width of 1024, the div. Okay, so we also want to, to do that on the section divs. So we're just going to comma, we're going to say section. Oop, typing it way too far. So section, arrow, div, save. Okay, so it's done it for those. And we need to center a line so you just go we can do it this way actually so m g l and then auto so m r m r there we go and then auto save so now that's going to center align everything which is great so now we need to do some spacing after the images so all the images, I'm going to say a margin, bottom, and then we're going to use our variable, so VAR, and then we have our spacing system. If I remember, it was spacing, and I'm going to say large, and then colon, save that. Now you've got that nice gap between the image and the text. And what we also want to do is on this page, we want to introduce a background of white. So I'm just going to say VG white background color white. This is a utility class now. So if I go back to case study, I'll go on the body and just say class BG white. So now you've got a white background. Okay. So the other spacing that we need to introduce is we also want a margin bottom spacing large on the h1 so you can see here it's done if actually that's probably too much so let me get rid of that i'm going to say the h1 we need to have a margin bottom so mb and then var spacing let's say medium okay that looks good and at the end of the p tags we want an MB, margin bottom, VAR, spacing, base, which is 16 pixels. So now we've got another space there. Okay. And then at the end of these H 
threes, we also want a spacing. So let's say we want a spacing base as well. We put comma. And oh, those are not H3s, those are H2s. So now we've got that nice spacing there. Okay, so now we're just introducing some simple spacing using our spacing system variables. If you find it value in this video, please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell. And now what we need to do is just introduce some utility classes for the grids because we want those to be in two columns or three columns. And because we already created those classes, we can go to our case study page. And if we just open this up, we go to this div here, which contains these three. And we go class, grid, and then grid, calls, three, and then we want a gap of one. Now, it hasn't done the grid calls three because we actually haven't created a grid calls three. We've only created it for a grid calls two. We can go back to our styles page and we can go here, copy that, paste, and all we'll do is we just hit three and we'll then add an extra frame and then save. And now you can see it's done that already here. And now I think we can add a bit more spacing below, below here. So I'll go back to page.css and just thinking, should we do that now? So to target this paragraph, because we don't want it to be on all the paragraphs. So we can say header H1 and then the P. So the P that is right after it. Let's see if this works. We want a padding, padding bottom of VAR. And let's say we want spacing and we want medium. Okay, there we go. So we added that nice spacing. And also probably we need spacing. I'm thinking now after each paragraph. Okay, yes. So the other thing we need to do is add a spacing between all these sections and headers. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say every section, we need a padding top of VAR. And again, we've got the spacing of sections, I believe. There we are. Save that. So now it's pushed. Now it's given this whole thing a spacing of padding top and now we need to do it on the bottom as well so pb and then var spacing sections and then save so now we got that nice separation between each section okay nice so we're nearly getting there and then next thing we need to do is we need to then introduce the grid calls column to here so we say class grid, grid, hyphen calls, probably typing mistakes there, gap one, save. So now if we go down, you can see we got the grid calls two. So now the last thing to do is to give a max width on these because these are, these are way too wide. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go back to page and what we're going to then do is we're going to say the the section P the section P's we need them to have a max width of 640 pixels save that so now it's giving that a better width and then we can say margin left auto and we could say margin right auto great so now that is center aligned these columns but we also need to do that on the heading as well so these are h3s or h2s so i'm just gonna go up here say section are they h2s let's see yes they're h2 so now we've got that nice spacing okay great so i think we have wrapped it up but the last one is this one here so that section is going to be a bit different to the rest because it is a 
a call to action section. So I'm just going to go right down. I'm going to say class of BG Gray 100. This is a class we created already. And here we're going to give this a class of button. And we want font display because this is what we created already in the style.css. We also want everything to align in the center. And what I'm going to do for that, I'm going to create a new class in style.css. So I'm going to say TAC, and that means text, oh, not text images, sorry. That is text align center. There we go. So if I go back to case study, I can then go to this class and then say TAC. That should center align it. And one little thing we need to do to this button class is we actually need to give it a display block. So this will then make the boxing model a lot better. And then we say inline block. There we go. So the spacing is, is a lot better. And we just need to give that a, we need to give that heading a font display. There we go. And then we just need to go back up because we also need to do it for this one. So we go to H1 and we go to case study, go back to the top. We want the H1 to have a class of font display. And we also want that to be TAC, which is text align center. For this one, we also want that to be in the middle. So I'll say class of TAC. Ooh, put the equals there. And we're not going to actually have a long line. Okay, so we are just going to delete some text. Okay, so a nice quick way of doing it is you can type lorem and I say 20, enter, save. Okay, that's probably too long, so command Z. I'm going to say lorem 10. Okay, great. And I think that wraps up this CSS because we kept it very simple. And again, if we go like this, it's mobile responsive. But as you can see, there's one tiny detail we need, which is the spacing on the left and the right. So the way we do that is we go to page and on here, we're going to say padding, we say padding left, VAR, spacing, base. And then on the right, we say VAR, spacing, base. Okay, so that, that doesn't seem to have done it for some reason. Oh, I'm so quite surprised. Why? <laughs> Okay, there's, there's a reason why. It's because it's not going to do it for these because these are in a grid column, but it has done it for the rest of these. It's done it for that one for some reason. Aha, because these are in sections. So we need to have a padding of left and right for the header P and H2. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to do a utility class. So we go back to case study. And for here, we just say PX base. And now we got that spacing on the left and the right index page. So again, just as a refresher, this is what we created. And when you then click on here, you're then going to go to the case study page. But we're actually going to introduce a very simple nav, which has got the name and about. We're going to recreate this into CSS. So it's going to be a lot more smoother. And we can then use that in sub pages as well.